if you want to hit your ultimate peak, everything should bless you. There is a way to live like this. You must see how to use the tools to build yourself into your truly spectacular human being. So, uh, the seven months in many ways were structured to break the familiar and step into the unfamiliar willingly. Well, some of you very willingly, some of you little pushing and some of you hard pushing, but you've done wonderful <laughs> So, it's been wonderful to have you here. Uh, a whole lot of people are saying sadhana people, sadhana pada people are really wonderful, that's nice. Because when you are on this path, it's very important that everything and everybody should bless you. If you walk on the ground, the earth should bless you. May this being grow because you will need everything. If you want to hit your ultimate peak, you will need everything that you can get, every kind of support that you can get from anywhere. So it's very important that everybody should bless you, everything should bless you. If you go and sit under a tree, the tree should bless you. There is a way to live like this, that is what sadhana is. That's what sadhana is about, to become so much in tune, whether it's an animal or a bird or a tree or a blade of grass, it all feels close to you from their end, not from your end. And they kind of do the best they can do for you. This some people will say, this is all rubbish, there is no science like this. They think science happened in laboratory <laughs> Science is happening in creation. You noticed a few things, that's all. Nobody has noticed everything. You just noticed a few things and you call that science. But it's happening, the phenomena of life is happening, not in the lab, in the world, in the cosmos. So, uh, to create a condu conducive atmosphere was the main focus of this culture always, that a spiritual person means immediately, you know, he's supported in this culture. Like uh, you have seen some of the panels in the Dhyanalinga, you've seen those panels of the sages and siddhars of Tamil Nadu. One of them is representing this, if somebody has any symbol of being spiritual, then even if he threatens your life, you don't defend yourself to that extent. Even if people didn't have food to eat for themselves or their children, if they saw a person on the spiritual path, they first offered to him because they felt he's putting his life to better use than ourselves. That kind of atmosphere we need to create in the culture. It is not that today we have to go, uh, you know, to… we have to depend on people for food, we have other ways of doing things. I was at the economic forum, so everybody is busy meeting to meeting, we are all running from meeting to meeting, it's like five days of madness. But uh, you know, everywhere there are a few coffee counters and like… Uh, snack kind of breakfast counters which is all kept there, people can go pick it up and eat anytime because there's no time to go for lunch, dinner, anything, we're just on throughout the day. I see… Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not making a statement on… Uh, a racist statement on anybody but I was just observing. Most people just come like this, all suited booted people, they come like this and they pick up what they want, <laughs> they don't like it, they just leave it there, put it in the bin, walk away. Uh, Indian people, little standing back and slowly going. The Japanese people, all uh, you know, top executives and things like that, these are not somebody who do not know how to move around. They come, the counter is about five feet away. When they come there, they pick it like this, bending down. I just observed repeatedly 
I thought, this is fantastic, you know, that it, they're not even receiving it from somebody, it is just kept there. But to pick up the food, there is a certain gratitude and devotion towards it. They're bending down and walking the last few steps. In a… in a… in a… in a totally corporate atmosphere, I'm saying, everybody is in uh, suits and boots and uh, everything, all right? They just… every one of them, nobody is… I mean, they're not even conscious, they're just doing it. I repeatedly sit there and observe, whenever a Japanese person comes to pick up something, they'll bend down, go there and pick up like this. I thought, this is what we need that we have some sense of gratitude towards the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we eat, and every other human being and every other creature on this planet in some way assisting our life, every moment. Hello? You couldn't exist. You're not existing because of your own silly intelligence. Yes, you're existing because the whole thing is working for you all the time. So one important part of sadhana is this, that you become like nothing. If you can't become nothing, at least become smaller than everybody else in the universe. Hello? It's very important. When your personality becomes small, your presence becomes very big. And that's what we need in this world. We need human beings who have a large presence not people who have a large personality and nobody can bear with them, tyrants. Too many tyrants. If I say a tyrant, you think of a Benito Mussolini or Adolf Hitler, no, no, no. Tyrants are everywhere. They are in the form of parents, they are in the form of teachers, they are in the form of… They are all over the place. Fortunately, they are not as capable as those two that I mentioned. Only their incompetence we are appreciating, <laughs> but they are tyrants. So, one important thing for growth is this, do not understand growth as like this. Growth is to become like thin air, that your presence is strong, but your personality is like nothing. Do you fit into anything? This is very important, the flexibility. At least the body, we've made it a little flexible. In the last few months, have they bent you, broken you a little bit? Yes. Some bones, I think, will we have to break still. <laughs> it's not just physical, physical flexibility, it's as a life, you're flexible. If you want to do something in this world, you must be able to fit into any situation and transform that. If you don't fit in, you cannot transform. That's what it is. So, uh, now that seven months are over and uh, time to go home or whatever, I hope you still have a home <laughs> No, no, you know, I've lived long enough, in seven months lot of things can change. <laughs> lot of things can change, who knows? <laughs> So wherever you go, sadhana must continue, okay? Yes. Sadhana is not something that you remember, oh, we did sadhana pada, very wonderful. <laughs> That's not it, sadhana must continue. You must… you must see how to use the tools to build yourself into your truly spectacular human being, hmm? I want to see that happening.